a Korean film that came out in 1990. It was subtitled, Son Goku Fights, Son Goku Wins, Son Goku Hits You with a Wiffle Ball Bat. Well, not that last part, but yeah, it's called Dragon Ball, Son Goku Fights, Son Goku Wins. And, I mean, you can rewatch that movie on YouTube. Somebody's flat out posted the whole thing with subtitles too, so uh, generous. Generosity comes a long way. Dude, that movie though, that is one hell of a movie I had a good time with. I mean, it's not the perfect adaptation, but it's pretty damn good. It's better than Dragon Ball Evolution. Far greater than that movie, I shit you not. I mean, from the start, the very beginning of it is, is completely accurate. <laughs> Goku is in, it, like, you know, just surviving on his own. His grandpa's dead. He believes it's the Dragon Ball. He still has it there. He goes over to pray to it and to let her know, Hey, Grandpa, I'm here. I'm alive still. <laughs> Goku behaves like Kid Goku does. It's not bad. He looks like him. I know that hair's like awkward as hell, but hey, they tried. <laughs> Can't say they didn't. This is cosplay trying, if anything. The costume was close to it. Um, let's see. And then you also have Bulma. Bulma, they they did what they could, I guess. Again, it's more accurate than Dragon Ball Evolution's Bulma. Now, one thing that I do like to watch here all the time is Goku's stunts. They do some hilarious ass stunts since they want it to look as, as accurate as possible to the anime, where Goku does some crazy ass leaps and somersaults. They added that shit here too, and it, it looks hilarious. Oh yeah, at one point, we see Goku catch a fish by yelling at it. <laughs> Again, they're, they're trying here. <laughs> Bulma's intro, it was pretty damn accurate too. It's funny how she pulls out a machine gun and tries to kill Goku when he wasn't even threatening her like in the anime and the manga. When their little introduction, it made sense that she freaked out and shot at Goku, but right here she was like... Remember the pterodactyl, that giant one that Goku first fights in the anime and manga? Here instead we got a a dude in a, I guess you would say almost like a pterodactyl suit, but it's more like a Power Rangers villain costume if anything. Speaking of the villain characters, Pilaf is the main antagonist and one of his side goons, you would say, is what appears to be a Saiyan. With the whole armor... crazy, right? <laughs> Interesting though, because this was 1990. They already had the introduction of the Saiyans. Unlike us. Now, almost all of the villains in this movie appear to have been made up for the flick. As you can see, most of them do look like Power Rangers villains. Or Super Sentai in this case. The other side characters here, you got the Sea Turtle. You got Roshi, who looks odd as hell. I don't know why they went with this design. They obviously knew what the characters looked like. I mean, it is an adaptation of the anime. And at one point, they're even watching the, the show. Yeah. Funny, right? Well, they were self-aware, if anything. <laughs> Oh yeah, other side characters, you got Oolong, who's this obviously just a guy in a fake pig head. It's not a helmet or a mask, it's bigger than that. And uh, all of the, the best characters, oh man, my favorites here, Yamcha and Puar, who smokes cigarettes. <laughs> and he's a plush doll. <laughs> hey, th this is actually the, the most creative way to include Puar, if anything. How else would you have preferred? Because what the hell is Poor in the first place? Is he a flying cat? I don't know what he is. I don't know if they ever elaborated on it. But I think it's funny as hell to see that they just went with a plush. And at one point they also, you know, he smokes. I'm like, damn, Poor, you got more personality here than in the series. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's not bad, right? Oh yeah, they even included chichi or milk if you prefer the Spanish stuff. The flying nimbus is also included. They did a pretty good job with with the effects of including the flying nimbus. Oh yeah, one of the best, funniest parts in my opinion is uh, when Master Roshi decides to just go full power, and you know how he goes all buff form. <laughs> the way they displayed it, <laughs> they had like a close-up shot of a young buff ass guy flexing, not showing his face. I was like, perfect. That's what I would have done too. <laughs> Amazing what you could do when when you use camera tricks, right? When you do this, God, you can't do that nowadays. They instead resort to just CG. They would just tell the old man actor, "Don't worry, just perform it. Act like you're hulking out. We'll do the effects." <sighs> Lame. This may not be the best anime live action adaptation, but it is the funniest. Y you'll have a blast with this one compared to any other adaptation that you can think of for sure. Well, Pilaf, as I mentioned, he is included and he is the main antagonist, if anything. He doesn't look like Pilaf 100%, but they, they got a little bit of him <laughs> in there. Funnily enough, he knows how to fight. So this version of Pilaf is actually more interesting than the real Pilaf himself. Ironic. I would also say that Oolong in this version is, is better than the original Oolong. Trust me when I say that, you gotta watch what he does. Dude, at one point in the end, he, he takes on Pilaf as well. Fights Pilaf side by side for, with Goku. They have to fucking do teamwork against his ass, and, and believe it or not. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I'm telling you, this movie. They threw a lot of shit out the bag and were like, you know what, let's just have fun with it. We clearly don't have the budget to make it 100% accurate. We know what the story is, we're going to include it, but we're also going to have fun with it. Clearly they had a blast making this. Now, there is another live-action Dragon Ball adaptation that came out a year later. A Taiwanese one called Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. I'm going to have to take a look at that one too and, uh, well, re-watch it because... I saw them over, I want to say, like around the time that I started making Dragon Ball videos, which was around the time I started making YouTube videos in the first place. So it's been a while, and uh, I definitely need to get back on checking that one out as well. Anyways, that's that's pretty much it for this video. <laughs> Go check out my Patreon. I, I post there almost daily, so uh, there's more content there every day than there is on this YouTube channel. There's like no censorship there as well, and I can definitely work on more videos that are movie related without any false claims here and there. Yeah, there's a lot of freedom over at Patreon, so go check it out. <laughs>